Someone asked in the comments section of my previous video about the Chevy Bolt why it seemed like the Chevy Bolt was full of machinery under the hood, and instead Tesla had a frunk. Well, if we pull the curtain back on the wizard, it reveals that no, the Model S is also full of machinery. Going on a quick tour of what's under the hood of the Model S, uh, this being a pre-refresh 70D, you'll find that uh, it's mostly the same stuff that you find, well, under the hood of something like a Bolt. It's just there's a lot of space to put all of it. So in this particular version of the Model S, you have right up front your 12-volt uh, battery there. Uh, it's nice that that's up front in this version because Tesla did have some issues with 12-volt uh, batteries dying prematurely or in some cases almost once a year. Uh, so at least that's easily accessible. The older Model S's actually had it buried somewhere off in that corner over there that you couldn't really get to easily. You've also got your coolant tank right there. Or over here is your main fuse box. Uh, let's see, as we go down into the, uh, the frunk space, what would be below the frunk area, you've got one coolant pump over there. You've got another coolant pump over there. Uh, that right there should be your ABS unit. There you can see the uh, that big cylindrical piece. Let me just change my focus. That cylindrical piece right there is the electric motor which drives the power steering rack, which the steering rack is right along there. Can't really see it well, but there's a little shaft right there. Uh, that is uh, the input for the steering rack that heads back to the, uh, the steering wheel. This big piece right here, which is covered in sound insulating foam, is your uh, electric air conditioning compressor. Um, it's fairly large. That piece right there is the sound insulation covering up uh, part of the, the front drive unit. Um, that should be the differential, as you can see the output shaft on that side. And the one on that side, can we see that? Yes, you can, kind of. It's over there. It's right back there. And then the drive unit itself is kind of tucked in back there. You can't see very much of it. In addition to all that, we've also got these two ginormous uh, structural beams here and here. Uh, which, if you ever happen to go on a Tesla factory tour, they show off um, basically having been accordioned because they're meant to absorb energy in the event of a collision. Panning over toward the front of the vehicle, you can kind of kind of make it out right there. Uh, that is one of the, the little uh, servo we do dads that controls the front active louvers. On the other side of the big structural beams, here, and on the side here, right there, those look like they're probably cooling fan controllers, seeing as how the output of them goes straight to the cooling fan over there. Also, you can see near the cooling fan controller there and there, uh, there are vents into the front wheel wells. That is actually where the air ends up going. One last thing I can think of to point out under here uh, is... Uh, let's see if I can find a good angle here. Right down there is that little thing that looks like a metal brick that has that line and that line going in and out of it. And then on, uh, let's see, on this side you can see these two lines going in and out of it right there. That is your uh, heat exchanger, which links the liquid cooling system to the car's refrigeration system, so to the air conditioning system essentially. And that's how uh, it can use the refrigeration system um, to increase cooling of the battery and the power electronics. Coming up to the corner, you can see your cabin air filter right there. And for those who are worried about long-term serviceability or, or worried about you know high voltage and getting under here, you'll note that all those orange bundles back there, those are your high voltage lines, um, and there aren't any that extend into this area. Uh, so you don't really have to worry too much about uh, being exposed to any high voltage when you're working in the front of the car. And that's what it looks like under the hood of the Model S with the front liner removed. Now it's important to note that the refreshed cars uh, have significantly larger cabin air filters and a, some extra plastic ductwork and stuff inside to accommodate said air filter. Uh, and it takes up a lot of space under the hood, which is why the frunks are smaller than the pre-refresh uh, dual motor cars. So that's just something to keep in mind. As usual, if you have any questions, post them in the comments below. And don't forget to rate and subscribe. Later!